we focus more on women because we've seen that even research has shown that when you invest in women, they, they deploy 90% of their income back into their families. Because most of the women that we've seen, when you empower them, the money they, they are generating, the livelihood income they are generating is used for their family. They're not thinking of buying new clothes. They're not thinking of going to parties. They are reinvesting their income back into their family. Yes, we can. Sure, we can change the world. Welcome to your home for sharing the best stories from the Young African Leaders Initiative Network. Be sure to subscribe to the Yali Voices podcast on iTunes and Google Play and visit yali.state.gov to stay up to date on all things Yali. My name is Nke from Nigeria. Nke Mokocha grew up poor in Lagos, Nigeria. She watched her mother struggle to raise her and her siblings after the loss of her father, and then suffered the loss of a brother to an illness, an illness for which money could have saved his life. It was a life made harsher by her mother's lack of education and opportunity, and she was determined to change the narrative for herself and thousands of other women in Nigeria. In this edition of the Yali Voices podcast, Nkem tells how she went from selling goods on the streets of Lagos as a child to creating Mama Money, a financial tech platform that enables individuals to invest in women-owned businesses in Nigeria. Nkem is determined to break the cycle of poverty and lack of education and skills training that disproportionately affects women. I started because of my experience as a young girl. 19 years ago, I lost my father. So my mother was a full-time housewife. She was practically doing nothing. So there was no livelihood income for us to feed. So going to school was a very big challenge for us. And um, it was very hard for her taking care of four children. So there was no support. So practically eating every day was a big challenge. So until a family friend came, gave us some money, to use for feeding, but instead of using it, she used part of it to feed us that day, and the other part, she used it to go start a small vegetable business. So from that business, she started um, getting little finance for us to feed in the house, but it was still very difficult. So at a particular time, I had to go hawk in the streets, selling shampoos in major streets of Lagos. I had to become a house help, helping people take care of their their children for me to get money to to write my my exams. So it was very, very tough. So after everything, I said, no child deserves to go through what we did because at the time we lost um, our elder brother because we couldn't get money to finance um, his kidney transplant. So for my mother losing her husband, losing her child because there was no money, it was very, 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 it's an experience I don't want anyone to go through. So because I saw what she did, what she passed through, we were hungry, she wanted to feed us, but there was no money. So I said, if she was educated, maybe if she had enough money, if she had a good business, if someone had given her good money, maybe things would have been different. So I said, immediately I get enough money, this is what I want to do. So I, I, I finished high school, I was lucky to get into the banking profession. And um, I worked in the bank for like eight years, working in the operations and marketing department. Uh, I, I got married, but um, I still had women that used to come to us to say, um, Nkem, Auntie Nkem, I want money to feed my child. I want money to to uh, for my child to go to school. So if I had, I used to help. But after I resigned and I had like a small office, in the morning when going to the office, because when I was working in the bank, I used to leave the house as early as 4 a.m. because of the bad traffic on Lagos Road. In the morning when I resigned, while going to the office, I found out that a lot of women sitting outside, I do, doing nothing. Most of their children not going to school. I said, what is happening? So some of them used to come away. So I walked up to some of them like, what is happening? Why is your child not in school? Like my husband doesn't have the means to, to send our children to school and I'm practically doing nothing. So this continued, I was so uncomfortable with it. So I, w I was waiting until I had a lot of money, but I just discovered that the, the money was not coming. So a family friend that had been good to, he, he used to train people on different skills. So all the money I made in my office for a particular period, I took it 
I printed flyers, I gave him money to buy materials, and I went into my community and I told them that Christian, Muslim, all women, anybody, any woman, you know you're not doing anything or you want an additional source of income. We're having this training for free, you are paying nothing. So that was how I started. Nkem's mother would tell her and her siblings that if she had gone to school, maybe things would have been different. Maybe she could get a job. It was a fate that Nkem's mother was determined would not befall her children. Nkem talks more about this period in her life and then on how she came to create Mama Moni. So because she did not go, she wanted us to go. So it was very important to her. So there are times that she had to sell her clothes to help us get books. There was a time she had like um, practically one cloth. So she couldn't buy anything. So every money she made, she used it for her feeding, then transportation to school, and sometimes books. So I was able to go to the university while working in the bank. So I, I went for part-time program because um, after getting I my first um, certification is um, from a polytechnic in Nigeria. So I have um, like a diploma in um, business administration and management. That was what I used to get um, the job in the bank. So while in the bank, I, I knew that I couldn't leave the bank because there was no money to finance my education. So I was working in the bank and I was going for part-time education at Lagos State University. Banking was taking up all my time. There was no time for my, my, my family. I wanted personal development, so but there was I couldn't take um, excuses every time from from my boss. So I was not feeling fulfilled. Meanwhile, in 2009, because I had this heart to help, because I wanted um, economic empowerment for for um, or would I say community transformation for the community I stayed. So I wrote a book on entrepreneurship, encouraging youth. I wrote a book that had them um, like, I searched for like 120 business ideas and I wrote the book. Because I was working in the bank, I couldn't go out to seminars. I couldn't go to talk to people to make them know that, okay, this book, with this book, you can find an idea and you can start a business. So for me, I wanted more out of life. I wanted to give back to the community, but banking was taking up on my time. And I was not feeling fulfilled. I go back, I come back and I am sad. I was not happy with myself. So I told myself that I have to stop. So I just took that decision and I resigned. Mama money is in pidgin English. It means mother of money because I want women to be financially empowered because when we started our trainings, our free trainings, we had women that after training them, they've acquired a skill. Some could talk to their family members to help them with like little cash for startup, but others did not have that help. So when I, when I go to the community and... I see some women, I'm like, have you started your business? Like, I can't start because there's no money. So some will meet me that, I, I love what you did, but there's no money to start. So since I had that background in banking, so I started saying to myself that that means we could actually give these women small amount of money to start a business. But I did not have the money. <laughs> so I kept on telling them that, don't worry, very soon we'll start lending. The ones that I could give money from my own pocket, I did to say, okay, you can take this. So, and for some, we give them startup materials to start. That after selling, you can keep the cash and start using it for your for your personal use. So the first training we, we did, we had close to 70 women. We had close to 70 women from my community. So after that, I started going to other communities because when I started seeing the women, people did not understand because they, they say you don't have money. And the little money that you use for yourself, why are you using it for other people? They are not your family members. I said, no, I know how I met this woman two months ago, look at what she's doing. And they come and tell me that I'm selling my products to schools because we used to teach them how to make products that they can sell in their community. So we taught them how to make homemade disinfectant, homemade, homemade um, liquid dishwashing soap. So they sell to people in their community. So they're like, 
I'm selling to this school, I'm making money. I'm selling to this hospital, I'm making money. They are using it for their bedrooms and their toilets. So I said, I know where I met this woman two months ago. This is what I want to do. So we started going to other communities to do that. So I used my money that I made from my, my shop, from the other skills that I had. Every month I was going to other communities to source for women to help them. When we started getting women that wanted us to lend them money, then I had a mentor. So he said, okay, he gave me some money for us to do a prototype. So we took five of my women, we lent them for six months, and they paid back successfully. So we said, whoa, that means this can work. So I took that money, I gave it back to him. I was looking for where somewhere else to get money to finance more women. Until in 2015, I saw this application for the Tony Lomelu Entrepreneurship Foundation. They're looking for 1,000 African youth to, to give them grants. So I applied using the five women that have financed as prototype and we got the funding for 5,000 US dollars. So from that 5,000 US dollars, we started lending our women money. From the $5,000, we got our first office from the $5,000. So that's what we used to start. Then two years into when I started Mama Money, the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos, they called for proposal, proposal from organizations doing women empowerment, youth empowerment, and we applied. And we got funding from the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos. So for the past two years, um, trainings for women, in different communities has been funded by the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos. So we, the women come for our training for free because when I had no money, there were trainings I wanted to go for, but it was expensive. I couldn't attend. So I said, this training, if you really want to help these women, they don't have any money. The trainings have to be free. So from the money we get from the U.S. Consulate General, we train them to acquire a skill, then we also train them to be financially literate. We had to innovate a toolkit because we discovered that most of these women, some women that we talk to, when they sell, they sell, let's say, $100. At the end of the day, they have $50. So they say to themselves, someone has come to steal my money. I discovered that they were not keeping proper records. So I told them that nobody is taking your money. This money is because you are not keeping good records. So we innovated that toolkit to help them keep records, keep sales, expenses to track sales, to track expenses, to track their stock. So with that toolkit, it's been financed by the U.S. Consulate General. So we give it to them for free. After training them, we teach them marketing skills, how to brand their product, how to sell their product, how to talk to them. So just like a mini business school for them because most of them are illiterate. So what we do is we identify a community. Let's say we go to a community and we train 100 women. So you see women that would go immediately, we finish that training. The next week they've started what we taught them. And you see some women, they have like a brick and mortar store, just a small store selling other things. So they use what we've trained them as an additional source of income. So we try to identify a leader in that community because for every community we go to, someone must say, okay, this woman, she's like a leader in this community. So we identify that woman. So we group them. So they, because it's a community, they know everybody. They know who is troublesome. They know who, if you give her money, she's not going to pay back. So with these informations, so when somebody comes, say, ah, she's owing too much money. If you give her this money, she's going to use that money to pay back. So for those women that we know that if we give them money, they won't pay back. Some organizations come to us to say, Mama Money, we love what we are doing. We want to give some of your women grants. So those kind of women, we identify them and give them the free grants. We hope to reach like 10,000 women in the next five years. After the grant from the Tony Lumino Foundation, we discovered that and paying for office, we had little funds remaining and we have this pool of women. So I innovated like my web platform enables individuals so individuals from different communities, they could practically go to our platform now to select any of our women and lend to them. So they lend, 
after six months, they get their money back with a 5% interest on it. So they could decide to relent the money or take back um, their full money. So that's what we've been using to finance our women. Women entrepreneurs need to be very diligent. They need to be hardworking and focused because one thing that has helped me has been focus. I've been so, and dedication. If you know you're passionate about something, even when other people are saying it is not going to work, you just have to believe in what you want to do. And then um, getting the right skills, getting information, personal development, you identify areas that you know that you are weak and you try to attend trainings to um, boost your capacity in those areas. So for me, I would say focus, dedication, you need to be hardworking because I don't want for anybody to motivate me. I push myself. For me, I, I, I encourage every woman because for our women that we train, we tell them we are giving you all these skills. We are empowering you with finance. For you to educate and train your children, they know. So there are times that we have to bring NGOs that are passionate about training children. We bring them, we invite them, and we tell our women, bring your children. Then we have, like, um, they do trainings for their children. In Nigeria, we have three sets of exams for the primary school education, secondary, and um, primary secondary school and the university education. So we have to bring NGOs to train children that wanted to go from primary school to secondary school, from secondary school to the university. We brought educators to help them with their, their exams. So we tell them the children must go to school because all this money you are making is for them to live a better life. And most of them, they really want their children to live a better life because they are not happy with their own situation. So, and for me, if I had not gone to school, I don't know if I'll be helping other women because my education working in the bank really exposed me. So if I had not gone to school, I would have been one of those women, maybe like my mother. So I tell my women that we're doing, we're investing in you so that you can invest in your children. For yearly network members who might want to do the same thing, I will tell them to start with what they have because for me, I was waiting until I had a lot of money, but I discovered that the money was not forthcoming. So I had to start with the little finance I had, the goodwill from somebody that had been good to. So when you look around, what what you need to start is always beside you, is always <laughs> in your community. So start with what you have. If you don't have money to say, um, start a business, or you want to start an organization that helps people, you could start with volunteering your skills, making people know that, okay, this is what you do. You are passionate about this thing. And the universe just has a way of helping you when you help other people. So starting with what they have, looking within themselves to say, okay, yeah, I can do this. And looking for like um, somebody, would like I say a mentor, somebody that can help them um, become who they want to be. I would say, for me, it's just a way of thanking the Yali Network because the Yali Network, the U.S. government, they've really been a big help to me because they were after the grant from the Tony Lumelo Foundation, the only organization that has helped us to reach more women has been the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos because it's where I get my joy from is when we train the women, when you see... They are like these women that have no skill because when people say low income, I tell them it's not low income. They have no income. They have no income. So you can't say they are low income because they don't have any income. So when we train them on these skills, so she's jobless, she doesn't have any money, she doesn't have any skill, then with the skill we've taught her, she can actually generate income. So for me, that is huge. So, and through our work, we've gotten recognition from the presidency in Nigeria. We've gotten three awards for the work we do in Nigeria. I couldn't have done this if I had the passion, but they helped me reach more women with the funding. So it would be a huge thank you to the U.S. Consulate General, to the Tony Lomelo Foundation, to the Yali Network, because there are people I've met through the network. I've gone to the RLC in Ghana, so we have people, we talk to each other, we mentor each other. If I need help in 
any there are some things that I need help with, I reach out to them. So the the the, the network, the Yali network, the the other Nigerians that if not for the Yali network, I wouldn't know them. But now we are practically like families. So the Yali network has really, really helped me. Getting the support I need from this network has really been helpful to me and my mom. Nkem is making a huge impact in the lives of thousands of women. To date, over 4,000 women have received investment financing and skills training. Nkem continues to look for ways to scale up Mama Moni so that she can continue to help more women become financially secure. Because investing in women means investing in families and breaking the cycle of poverty. Be sure to come back for more inspiring stories from young African leaders on the Yali Voices podcast. Join the Yali Network at yali.state.gov and be a part of something bigger. Our theme music is Ego Happen by Grace Jerry and produced by the Presidential Precinct. The Yali Voices podcast is brought to you by the U.S. Department of State and is part of the Young African Leaders Initiative, which is funded by the U.S. government. 